Hello everybody and welcome back to your Exercise at Home series brought to you by Monash Council, by we, your Monash Council instructors. Today's class will be a freestyle, body balance-like class with an emphasis and a focus on flexibility and mobility. So with balance, you can focus on a different kind of variety of things. You can have strength focus, you can have a balance focus, you can have a core focus, but today we're gonna to have a flexibility mobility focus. And just to reassure you, this is the aspect of physical activity that I personally find the most challenging. I've always been a very stiff, inflexible person myself. I've got stiff Viking style, apparently it's technically called, um, fascia, the connection between my muscles. So I always find stretching difficult. I was not only two kids in my primary school who could not touch his toes in grade one. And so flex stretching is really, really useful. And if you're like me, this is the class for you because the thing that we need the most is often the thing that we struggle the most to do. And getting back some more range of motion can just open up the world to you literally and figuratively and can help avoid the risks of injury through exercise or through life that might otherwise come by gradually crunching up and bunching up through other kinds of exercise like weight work and other strong things. So mobility and flexibility is worth doing, especially if it doesn't come easy to you. So we'll walk through things together and it's not about the shape you make, it's about how you feel in the area of stretching. Try to make sure you never overstretch. So don't force anything. Your body will kick back and lock things down if it feels like you're taking it out of its safety zone. So more is not better when it comes to stretching, rather slowly, gently cajoling yourself into trusting a slight increase in what you feel is your range is the way to play the long game and get the flexibility that you desire. So we'll start out with some Tai Chi just to warm ourselves up. Loosening up the body can make a big difference to help with stretching mobility. And if you do have any issues in terms of health, in terms of joint management, do consult your healthcare provider and only move today in ways that feel safe and effective for you. Any shape, any option you don't want to take on or you want to adjust to suit yourself, be the master of your body and do just that. So we'll start with our feet really, really wide, our chest high, we'll tuck our tailbone under slightly, feeling long through the arms, and then we will float out on one side, and then float out on the other side. Doing what we call arm circles. So notice how my top wrist is gliding along at shoulder height, like I'm painting a wall with the back of my wrist, and at the same time my bottom hand is like running fingers through some beautiful water at hip height. So test the waters with your fingers below and paint the fence with your wrist above and glide your body side to side at the same time. So you feel like you're drawing a big oval simultaneously with two pens. One up top, one down below, side to side. And then if it feels good, start to turn your upper body a little bit towards the corner of each eye that you're drawing. Let the movement be natural. Let the movement be smooth. Your own internal feeling-based definition of graceful. Weightless arms. Slow, smooth breath turning effortlessly. Then when you get to one end, turn, draw back and push. Other side, come out, draw back and push. The high wrist is the wrist of the side of the body that you're turning towards. So high here on the left, pushing through together, high here on the right hand, pushing through together. And notice how I'm releasing my feet as and when my body feels like it's right for me to do. So do let your feet swivel 
on your heels and don't create any unnecessary knee pressure. So turn to the foot position that your knee loves you for and all will go well. Try a beautiful slow breath out on the slow push out. So in up top, exhale and push. In up top, exhale and push. Then come to the middle, reach down to the floor like you're picking up something wonderful, throwing it in the air, and let your arms float wide. Inhale, swing low, reach high, and then arms open across the sky. Lowering as much as you can through the hips at this moment and when you sit back and reach down. So it's not about how low your fingers go, it's about how great your lower back feels and how much control you feel of your lower back as you tip forward. And the great thing about moving slowly is that you can explore that in a way that is safe and relevant for you. And how good does it feel at the top? Just celebrating the beautiful colour of your own roof. Maybe there are cobwebs there. Maybe there's your favourite light bulb. Or a lampshade or whatever light fitting that you love, that you've grown to love. Or that you think, you know what? Maybe I should get around to replacing that at some stage. One more, in and let yourself feel your way through it. Feel the joy of relaxing your shoulders, arms wide, knees wide, body open. Okay, Tai Chi warm. Let's get, we'll do a quick sun salutation sequence. Just one on each side and then warm and stretch. So feet together, knees together, if you've got a mat or something soft, let it be behind you. Otherwise, you've got a floor, whether it be soft or not, you can step wherever you wish. Inhale, extended mountain. Exhale, knees bend as much as you think you'll need for a comfortable fold. And then fold your belly onto your thighs, fingers to the floor. Step back with your right leg. Low, relax shoulders, hips deep, palms to the floor. Moving back, downward facing dog. Hopefully you're getting used to the sequence after having done a couple of these classes, if you have. And then forward, round one, drop to your knees as your shoulders get over your wrists to make sure everything is manageable and smooth first time through. Elbows snug as you float down towards the floor. Then hips rest and you spread open the chest. Pull the shoulders back into a baby cobra. Tuck the toes, push the butt high. Melt down through the heels as you wish, pushing back through the knees. And then bend knees, step right foot between hands. If it doesn't make it, pick it up and carry it the rest of the way. Melt into the lunge, look to the horizon, then glide your right foot in, so neck foot in next door. Zip the legs up, forward fold, then rise. Hands by sides. Round two, inhale, extend a mountain, exhale, forward fold. Left leg lunge, go back generously, right to the back of the room, melt hips down, melt shoulders down, press palms, hip distance apart, shoulder distance apart, beautiful, beautiful high apex tailbone, and then fly, 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 knees or toes, Neck long, belly strong, elbows snug, and a slow drop down towards the floor, hovering like a hovercraft, catching yourself, and then landing. Baby cobra, or explore into your upward facing dog, lifting a little bit, then tuck the toes, push back behind, look forward, step forward with the left foot between the hands, Taking a bit of time to get there, melting and looking, sliding the other foot in, 
touching knees and then lift out of there and hands by sides. This is so good as a setup for movement that I think we'll do two more. So inhale, hopefully getting comfortable with the sequence. Bend knees, forward fold. Lunge back, right leg, hips low, shoulders soft. Press down palms, down dog, long back, all the way up to your tailbone, sinking through the heels. Then fly forward, knee or toe anchor. Hold for a fraction of a second. Come down slowly. Catch yourself with a good bit. Then hips to the floor, baby cobra, maybe a little bit more upper back, wherever the upper back yields gently to your breath. Then tuck and push. Look forward, reach forward through your right leg. Hips melt, left foot in, standing narrow and true, forward fold, then rise up, hands by sides. Round four, let the round focus for this round be fluid, continuous motion. Inhale, extended mountain. Exhale, forward fold, fingers to toes, lunge back left. Inhale as you spread your chest forwards. Exhale as you push your butt to downward facing dog, coiling the spring, then inhale as you release and fly. Exhale as you hover and float. Hips touch, breathe in and spread your chest up and across the wall. Breathe out, apex tailbone. Look forward, inhale, and bring through your lunge. Exhale, trace foot in and forward fold. Inhale, climb the mountain. And exhale, plant the flag across your chest. Let's move, or rather, let's build the ability to move. Hip mobility critical for knee and lower back health. When you lose the ability to move through your hips, other joints above and below that are not happy twisters become unhappy twisters to get you through the twists that the world throws at you. So let's get into our hips in a couple of fun ways. And probably the most fun way of all is a thing called frog pose. So we're gonna start here doing the splits with our knees. Now not necessarily all the way down for splits of course, but just wherever you can. So if you've got a mat, I recommend going along the line of the mat because this pressure of the knee on the floor can be quite uncomfortable. If you want to fold the mat over and get your knee on top of it for princess and a pea comfort, you certainly can. You have seven mattresses under there if you choose. And then turn your feet out like you're a frog being skewered on a dissecting table and then drop down to your elbows, flatten out your back, and think, wow, this is so comfortable. And if you're thinking that, you're doing it correctly. Now to make it even more comfortable, move your hips around a little bit, gently and slowly. Particularly explore pushing your butt backwards, slow, 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 and there'll be a point where pshirong, the stretch comes on even more enthusiastically. So the inner thighs are tingling with happy fire. Breathe out and bring a positive, happy thought into your mind. Let your body feel your emotion, trust you, and you'll find that the fire will simmer down and become a snug, warm bath. Now in this position, we're gonna use our breath to create some magic. So what I want you to do is as you breathe in, squeeze the knees in together like you're trying to snap to close the bear trap without actually moving because of course the floor's in the way. Squeeze all the way through the inhale for about a good five or six seconds and as you breathe out, relax. Relax the hips completely. Breathe out and just let the hips go. And you'll probably notice that just by having done that, your hips feel like they've unlocked some tension. 
and maybe this position that was a bit uncomfortably like opening before almost feels like it's a bit too pedestrian and maybe you can get one knee a little bit wider to aspire to that feeling of hip stretch you had before and if you can do move the knee out an inch or, or an inch a millimeter half a centimeter a small incremental amount then the same thing breathe in and squeeze the knees in 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 then breathe out and oh the sweet relief and it really is quite marked like you'll find one breath like this where you squeeze in on the inhale and then release on the exhale just unlocks magic so if you can and if you want to scroll the knees a little bit wider we'll do that one more time inhale squeeze 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 and then exhale this is why we came and by came you didn't go anywhere <laughs> this is why you switched your television on your computer on just for this feeling here and now how do we get out of here that's a good question if you feel like you're asking yourself that question you can slide the knees together but if that's too much work or if, that's, if that feels impossible what you can do is dive forwards onto your belly and then let your knees come together behind you and now give your legs a bit of a wiggle you probably feel an unmistakable sense of life through here and through here and if you do that is life well spent so now we're going to do a bit more for our hips come here and we're going to do a modified half lotus and by modified you can modify as much as you like for heavy heavy modification what you can do is take one foot straight out in front of you and then let the other foot just bend next door if that can be your anchor point we're going to be turn, oh, you know, yeah. we'll do that we'll do that and then come back to more hips i know you won't we'll do more hip stuff there so out here foot on the knee scratch that foot on the knee or around the knee and then if you can slowly convince this leg to drop down so this is a position if you choose otherwise what you can do is you can actually bend this leg your left leg 90 degrees in front of you and then you can put your other foot either directly on top of the knee or if that feels a bit too crumpled up and you're not sitting on both butt cheeks you can bring this foot and instead sit it on the shin or you can bring it to the floor in front of you so once you've got the foot position you think you're happy with ask yourself a couple of questions are both my sit bones on the floor do i feel like my spine is straight up i'm not sitting back like this with a rounded back i can sit forwards and upwards with both butt cheeks down i feel like i'm straight and true and if you do have your foot on your shin or your knee pull this toe back towards this knee and you find that it creates a sense of firmness and stability around this knee that a loose foot doesn't quite have so flex the foot back in toe towards knee sitting up nice and tall and now as you breathe out gently gently apply a little bit of pressure just got a 10 minute 10 percent phone battery warning to clear there so foot on the knee melt 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 and like we did before use your breath and your muscles to create some magic so as you breathe in try and pull your knee up through your hand like you're trying to go and send your knee that way with the strength of your muscles resist with the hand so breathe in resist with the hand closing the knee up 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 and as you breathe out, ah, oh, just let the hip go. Let the hip go. Don't force anything, but see if your leg yields to the gentle persuasive pressure, the gentle persuasive light pressure of your hand on your knee. Same thing again. Breathe in, knee up, knee up, knee up, trying to push against the hand, hand resisting the knee. You get a free strength test, free challenge in your arm, resist your own leg. And then breathe out 
and that drop feeling you may actually feel that happening through here again this kind of stretching seems to bring very 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 rapid instant responses breathe in knee in knee in knee in knee in, knee in. breathe out ah There you go, and you probably already noticed quite a marked change in the open feeling, the ability for this knee to drop down at this hip, Constantine ring down towards the floor, rather than starting up here, which is where you may have already started. Okay, other side. So, you can either go straight leg in front, foot on knee, working like this, so up, down, or going 90 degrees on the floor, foot on opposite knee, foot on opposite shin, foot on opposite floor, foot on floor in front of leg. Two butt cheeks down, tall, upright, lower back with a gentle shallow inward curve rather <laughs> bulking out behind you, making that noise too. Putting the foot where it feels good, pulling the toes to stabilize the opposite knee, Sitting tall, resting lightly, using breath and muscle to create hip movement magic. So inhale, force, no, strengthen, push the knee up through the hand, let the hand resist, 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 resist. So you're not going anywhere. The force of your lifting knee being matched by the holding of your downward hand. And then breathe out, let the leg go and just let the hand fall naturally and it's actually quite amazing you usually almost invariably get a good degree or two of fall feeling the hips give way every single breath inhale pushing up through the, through the hand pushing up through the hand pushing up through the hand exhale ah oh, melting through the hips almost feels like you've just pulled the air out of one of those inflatable things and you are deflating to the floor, but in a really good way. Not that there's a bad way of doing that, but you know, like it feels just so wonderful to unlock tension so easily just with your breath. Inhale, push, 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 push. Exhale, enjoy. Enjoy and savour the sink down towards the floor. My goodness, I should do this more often. <laughs> I'm kind of glad I'm recording this so I can play it back and do it myself. Because yeah, just a bit of attention and a bit of time can create a wonderful feeling. Okay, come up out of there. Give yourself a bit of a shake, shake, shake. And now let's get some leg warmth and some upper back rotation to add to what we've just done for our hips. So twisting upper back, great for our lower back to keep it nice and stable. So come to your mat, take a bit of a lunge forward, and then drop down into your lunge, but avoid the knee going too far forward. If the knee sort of breaks the line of the big toes, bring your foot forward to match. So that way, as you drop into the hammock of your own hips, your hips dropping down towards the heel on the floor, you can use this hand just to stabilize. Your shin is still approximately vertical. A little bit of forward push is okay, but stay behind the line of those toes and also trust the feeling in this knee. If this knee feels good, that's a great sign. If this knee feels a bit like it's absorbing pressure you don't want, then move the foot further forward to allow the knee to have a more graceful position. Now, in this position here, First of all, do melt the hip down and feel the groin stretch. And then, tell you what, I should say the other way around because I want to face you. You hold where you are, or you can come with me actually. Step forward, make sure you step forward with the leg that's closest to me. The leg that's closest to me, so the leg that's closest to me is the one that's forward. So as you tip through here and we do the twists, you're twisting towards me, and we can see each other. Well, <laughs> by we, we can see each other, you can see me, and I can, through the advantages of theatrics, pretend that I can also see you. So, down we are. 
Now take your opposite hand and put it on the floor next to your foot. And with the hand on the same side, just gently guide yourself and turn your chest towards the front of the room. If you want, reach the other hand up, but watch out for shoulder pressure and avoid the temptation to go <coughs> and crank back. Just let the arm be a natural reach out and then let that hand bend and bring the hand to the small of your back. And now, as you fall down through the hip, see if you can swivel up through your heart. The more you relax this top shoulder, the better this feeling will be. So the top shoulders falling down through your back, your hips are falling down through your heel, and you've got your hand supporting you on the floor. Now, if you want to add a bit of strength to this, you can tuck your toes and lift into the lunge. And now in this lunge position, maybe we can take the other hand and reach up, stretching the fingers as long as possible and letting that align our shoulders as your shoulders swivel to get in the same line as the reaching arm. Keep the hips dropping, push back through the heel, let the groin stretch join with the gentle twist and make sure your lower back doesn't feel anything nasty. Let your lower back feel happy and safe as you rotate through your upper jack, back and chest and you feel the stretch and the strength through your hip area. Now, keeping the legs in the same position, we're just going to change hands. Take this top hand and put it down on the floor and then turn away from me to the back of the room and either reach up through the arm or bring the arm behind the small of your back or just turn with your hand resting on your hip or your outer thigh and with a few breaths see if you can climb the wall behind you with a searchlight shining from the middle of your upper chest. You'll feel a real hip stretch with this combined with the upper back twisting. One long breath in and then breathe out. And now come down, drop your knee to the floor. And then straightening the leg in front of you as much as is comfortable. Tip gently from the hip, getting the belly button towards the thigh, keeping your chest up, feeling a stretch along the back of the leg. Respecting the fact this is quite a strong position to stretch the back of the leg. So no need to fold yourself up like a gymnast or a ballerina. Copy the feeling. I'm oh, sorry. Work by the feeling. Tip from the hip, getting the belly button down, closing the gap there to create work the stretch through there. Two more slow breaths really savouring the exhale and feeling the exhale bring relief and release along the back of the leg. Then just come forward and then kick out of there. And now I'm going to turn around the other way. Maybe you can turn around the other way too. So when you step forward with the leg that's closest to me and then do your initial twist, we can see eye to eye. So stepping in, dropping into our lunge, imagining our hip falling down to the back of the heel in front of us, placing the heel below the knee so that it's as much vertical as possible, minimizing the sense of this, the knee breaking forward in line of the foot, bring the foot forward to match wherever the knee goes to when you fall into the stretch of the hip there. And then opposite hand on the floor, turn your chest towards me, Breathe in, reach to open, breathe out, hand behind the back, and then using the upper shoulder and the hand behind the back, not as a crank, but just as a gentle coaxing opening lever, turn your chest up the wall in front of you. Keep falling down through the hip, opening up through the chest and relaxing this top shoulder as much as possible. So it's an openness here. It's a fulcrum lever back here and a generous fall into the hip, creating a stretch there and through the hip area. 
And if you want the challenge for a bit of strength, tuck the toes, up we go, reach overhead, stretching up. Now it doesn't have to be overhead, it might be out here, exactly that's fine, but if it's still stretch long through the arm to encourage your shoulders to align with wherever the arm's reaching. And then if you do want to open more, don't do it through the arm, do it through the shoulders. So the shoulders go, you know what, I can go further and then let the arm follow their line to maybe take you across the sky towards second by second across the clock above you. One nice slow breath out and now hands swap on the floor, turn towards the back of the room. Maybe reach the arm up, maybe coil, cup, bring the arm around behind the back. Maybe just slide the arm down your top thigh and turning through the upper chest. Letting every breath out be an opportunity to find a little bit more freedom in that twist. Noticing how the upper body position is creating a different kind of stretch, different quality of stretch through the hips on the floor. Each of those angles making a difference for you. And now, face front, drop the rear knee, straighten out the front leg as much as is comfortable, and then bring belly forward, keeping chest open, tipping, breathing, gentle feeling of the stretch, trying to minimize the hunch and maximize the openness from the upper body tipping from the hip to create feelings of improvement and movement in the stretch. Three more breaths. Generous inhale, grateful exhale, feeling your body yield and move with your breath. Couple more. Lucky last. Savoring the exhale. And then come back on both knees. Take the knees slightly apart. Bring your hands in front of you and just fall through your chest and also fall through your tailbone. Effortless, effortless fall through throat, through tail, through elbows. Then let your arms come round beside you, reaching round towards your little toes, and rest lightly on your forehead. And allow your upper body to sink, your hips to sink, your breath to slow. And stay here for a couple of holy breaths. Exhales. And then rise up. And congratulations, you are done. So thank you for attending my virtual balance class.